The Donkey Kong Country series is one of the greatest and most iconic video game series in pretty much all of history. From 1994 to 1996, there was a new Donkey Kong Country each year, with new characters and a whole lot of fun to be had with each new installment. But then, it suddenly stopped. There was no Donkey Kong Country 4 in 1997. That makes sense though. A series to have a new game every single year is a bit much. I think a break would help Donkey Kong Country 4 to be even more impressive when it finally releases. There was no Donkey Kong Country 4. The company that made the country games, Rare, was even eventually bought out by Microsoft in 2002, so they couldn't make any more Donkey Kong countries. But a certain studio would step up to the plate and dedicate themselves to reviving the monkey. This is the story on how Donkey Kong Country returned. First, let's go to 1998, where a new subsidiary company would be born, Retro Studios, based in Austin, Texas. Retro Studios was made as an alliance between both Nintendo and Iguana Entertainment's founder, Jeff Spangenberg, because that alliance needed to happen, I guess. This alliance was formed to develop GameCube games for a more mature audience. And just by looking at Iguana Entertainment's logo, you can tell Nintendo picked the right people to make mature games. Retro Studios would make their first game aimed at mature audiences in 2002, the goaded Metroid Prime, and they instantly showed Nintendo that they could make good games with Nintendo's characters. A Metroid Prime sequel would then come out two years later, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. It showed how successful the first game was and how talented Retro was as a studio. Instantly after Retro made Metroid Prime 2, Retro would tell Nintendo that they were interested in making a game featuring Donkey Kong. The CEO of Retro, Michael Kelbaugh, even worked as a tester on the original Donkey Kong Country series. So Retro really thought they had it in them to make a true successor to Donkey Kong Country 3. Nintendo, however, rejected this idea, and they told Retro to just keep making Metroid Prime games. So, they had to listen. And in 2007, Retro would make Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. But after the third Metroid Prime, something changed. Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of both Mario and Donkey Kong, suddenly wanted to see Donkey Kong on the big screen again. A new major Donkey Kong game. And this game wasn't going to be another Jungle Beat or another Donkey Kong 64. It was going to be a sequel to the beloved Donkey Kong Country series. Donkey Kong Country was specifically chosen because the North American Nintendo fans kept asking for Donkey Kong Country 4. So, to make the fans shut the fuck up, Nintendo decided they wanted to release a new Donkey Kong Country. Miyamoto was wondering what studio would be capable of developing such a game, and then it clicked. Retro asked a couple years earlier saying they wanted to make a new Donkey Kong game anyway, so it was settled. Retro Studios would be making the next Donkey Kong Country. Satoru Iwata described all these events as fate, like this project was meant to fall onto Retro's shoulders. The team from Retro would fly all the way to Japan to talk with Iwata and Miyamoto themselves to determine this new Donkey Kong game's direction. Miyamoto even flat out told Retro, Donkey Kong is my baby and you better get it right. But Iwata was confident that Retro would do a good job with this game. He was sure that they could continue the series without Rare. He truly believed in Retro as a studio. So Retro got the job to make this new game, officially. As soon as they got the job, Miyamoto would tell Retro in English, Please take care of DK. He is my friend. And Retro would return to America. This is when the project to revive our favorite monkey truly begins. Retro would codename the game F8 to keep it hidden from the public. And development would begin. Retro was really excited to work on this Donkey Kong game. So far, Retro has only made Metroid games, so they were loving the drastic contrast between working with Metroid's somber tone to now working with Donkey Kong's goofy tone. The first week of development was Retro actually just replaying the original country games to gather inspiration. They wanted to make sure to carry over iconic elements to this new game, such as the barrel cannons and the minecart levels. But they wanted to refine these elements to make a new experience for the player. So the fans could really tell that this game was an evolution of those classic games from the 90s. Retro even took inspiration from games nobody would ever expect, like Wario Land on the Virtual Boy, having both a foreground and background that you can move around in. Retro put small features like this in the game to really make the experience unique. This game really was a Donkey Kong Country 4. It was a sequel, not a rehash. Because of this, Retro was pretty nervous, 
They felt they had a lot to live up to, those original games were so good, and they didn't want to disappoint fans with a shitty follow-up. But an advantage for Retro Studios came with how they felt about the original Donkey Kong Country. Pretty much all the team at Retro had played these games before and knew what made them good. Satoru Iwata said himself that Retro's passion for Donkey Kong Country generated an energy that was poured into this new game. And for the people at Retro who haven't played DKC before, such as assistant producer Risa Tabata, they would come up with new ideas for the game to make the experience newer and not just a straight copy-paste of the original games. It was an excellent use of teamwork. This new game, Donkey Kong Country Returns, was definitely in the right hands. But that doesn't mean development went smoothly. At all. Retro had some slips while developing, since they only really made Metroid Prime games before Returns. A lot of things they would make would just look like it was from Metroid instead of Donkey Kong. Even six months into development, some members of Retro would just play a level and say stuff like, Bro, that palm tree looks like it was ripped from Metroid Prime. And then they would have to go back to the drawing board. It was a difficult transition for sure, but they had guidance from Shigeru Miyamoto himself. Miyamoto would travel to Retro Studios every once in a while to playtest what they had, giving feedback wherever he saw fit. Retro was very appreciative of this. They saw Miyamoto as almost a kind of mentor that would push the team in the right direction. Even if Miyamoto and Retro would have to sit together for hours and hours, trying to perfect tiniest of animations, Retro would still be grateful for Miyamoto's input, because they knew with his input they would make one hell of a game. Because of this guidance, Retro would deadass call Miyamoto Master Yoda during development. But sometimes, Retro didn't see eye to eye with Master Yoda. One time, Miyamoto was just walking around in one of Retro's prototypes as Donkey Kong. You know, as you do. Looking at his animations and just making sure his baby is looking perfect. One of these animations Miyamoto was looking at was just DK turning around. And when he would turn around, DK would kick up a little cloud of dust. Miyamoto thought it was entertaining that this dust animation almost looked like DK was blowing on something. That just lit up something in Miyamoto's head for some reason. And he told Retro that, dude, you should add a feature where Donkey Kong can blow on things. Retro was confused as fuck by this. They were wondering what the hell Yoda was on. So they, they just added it to add it, you know. And they still thought this little feature was dumb as fuck. But then, after a while, they kind of warmed up to it and thought it added to Return's whimsical feeling. This is the kind of development Returns had. There were definitely some challenges, but at the end of the day, everyone knew that Retro would make a good product. With geniuses to guide them like Miyamoto, this was a revival made with passion. The Returns team wanted this to be fun for people who didn't even play the original country games. With new multiplayer mechanics, both Kongs could move around at the same time, instead of having to tag each other in like the original trilogy. This made it fun for both players. Both players could constantly do something. But you, you fucking get it. Retro was goaded and how they crafted this game in development is amazing. You know, whatever. So, what did the people think when it was publicly shown? This project was in secret for years, even having the code name I mentioned earlier. So in E3 2010, Retro would show the world that Donkey Kong Country is returning. Metroid titles. But when they said they were ready for something new, we asked them to take one of the most treasured franchises in video game history and to make it magic again. If you listen, you can hear it coming. It was finally shown. Donkey Kong Country is coming to the Nintendo Wii, a, a new one! This surprised pretty much everyone. Retro kept the project hidden really well for years, and now it's finally shown. The fans are now hyped to know that DKC4 is on the way. After the reveal, Iwata told Retro that, I am looking forward to playing this product with my family and enjoying it. The E3 reaction and the message from Iwata really boosted the motivation of Retro tremendously. They were working on the game for so long that they almost forgot that they were making it for an audience that truly cares about the series. But development wasn't over, they had to finish up the game. Which you wouldn't think would be that hard, but they only had 4 levels fully completed at the time. That means they had 5 months to finish 67 levels. It was a lot of pressure, but Retro had to commit to finishing the game as strongly as they could. They would even work overnight to get as much done as possible. And honestly? They didn't choke at all. 
Iwata commented that the game rapidly bloomed once Retro entered the final stretch. With more ideas for levels constantly coming, everything was actually turning out pretty great. You couldn't even tell that 94% of the game's levels were made in the last 5 months. So with Retro hard at work, time kept ticking, closer and closer to release date. And the marketing for this game was also getting insane. To get people to buy returns, they did some crazy ass publicity stunts. Like in Sydney, they made a pile of bananas that was 16 feet tall, and any people passing by could just take a banana and eat it if they wanted. Next to this pile was a giant inflatable movie screen of returns, cause, you know, they had to show the game. But then the next thing they did was make this dude, Takeru Kobayashi, eat 16 bananas in 60 seconds. And then finally in the UK, they had the strangest promotion on launch day. Some people were just allowed to trade in actual bananas for copies of the game. And yes, I'm serious, this, this game was fucking insane, dude. All of the promotions made for the game were really fun. But honestly, if the world knew the time crunch Retro had to do before the game was released, people would be shitting themselves, expecting this game to be awful. But it wasn't. It wasn't awful at all. It was a really good game, actually. The reception was really positive. The gameplay, the difficulty, the music. It really felt like Donkey Kong Country. Retro actually succeeded in making Donkey Kong Country return. But Retro wanted to know just one more thing before they called this game a true success. After the game was released, Retro asked Iwata, Are you having fun playing our game with your family? Iwata simply responded, Yes. This studio was able to go from making an amazing first person shooter with Metroid into an amazing platformer with Donkey Kong. Those are two completely different genres, and they nailed both. Retro would later go on to help develop Mario Kart 7, where a map based off of Returns appeared, featuring iconic Returns-made characters like this frog named Fragoon, and Returns itself would get ported to both the 3DS and the Nvidia Shield. And because it would be a literal sin not to mention, for the 3DS's version's marketing, Nintendo hired some dude to wear a Donkey Kong costume and scare the shit out of people. And that's how Donkey Kong Country returned. Returns would later get a sequel on the Wii U, that being Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Tropical Freeze's existence proved that DK's return was a massive success. We now actually live in a timeline where we can look forward to more country games releasing. And that's all thanks to Retro Studios' passion.